Okay, now we are going to draw a network diagram which have weights on them. So if you remember from before, a weight just is a numerical value. And so if we have a look at this diagram here, we have a weight from A to B that is nine. And we have been asked to construct a table from the weight graph shown opposite. So I'm going to share my whiteboard and we are going to draw a table from this graph using the weights that I've been provided. So let's get my whiteboard up. Now I'll quickly just draw the graph so that we can see how we get the table from the graph. So I'm going to draw the graph quickly, just bear with me for a second. Okay, so that's the edges and I'm going to go in and quickly put the nodes in in red. And now I'm going to quickly label them. This would be a good time to, um, to write this down in your book if you are taking notes. And I'm going to put the weights on each edge. Okay, so there we have our network diagram. Now I'm going to convert this network diagram as asked by the question into a table. So firstly, what you want to do is use each node as a heading. So we would draw a box along the top and we would put each node in there. So I'm going to put A here, I'm going to put B here, C, D, and finally E. So they are all our nodes and I'm going to use them as my headings in my table. Now ignore this box I'm colouring in, we don't need to use it. But I'm going to go down and do the same thing along the side as I did for the top. So I'm going to put A along there and you can go ahead and put lines there. B, there, C, D, and E. And I'm going to complete this table. Almost done. Just a couple more lines to do. Last line. Okay, so this is what your table would look like if you're asked to transform a network diagram into a table. And the first step you would do is you would look across, so from A to A, so you'd go across the top and down the side to the first box. The first box, A and A. And you would look, and you would look from A to A, what weight there is but from a to a there is no weight so you would just put a line now we'd go across to a to b so from a to b across here we have a weight of nine so i would put nine in here from c to a there is no direct edge from c to a so we would leave that blank 
from A to D, A to D, we have a weight of seven. So you would put seven in there. And from A to E, there is no direct edge going straight from A to E. So we would leave that one blank as well. And you would go down and you would do this for the whole thing. So from A to B, again, the same as there is in the top row, there would be nine. From B to B, there is no weight. So we will put zero there. From B to C, there is a weight of three. Oops, my three was not very good. There we go. From D to B, there is no direct edge because C breaks that edge. So you would put zero. And from B to E, there is a direct edge going straight from B to E. So we would put four in there. Now from A to C, there is no edge. So you would put zero. From B to C, there is an edge of three. From C to C, zero. And from D to C here, there is six. So you'd put six in there. And C to E would be zero. From D to A, there would be seven. And when you get towards the bottom of your table, you can kind of look at what you have already done to fill in. So if I go to B to D, there is a line there, so there must be a line here. If I go C to D to C, C to D, there is six, so there must be six here. It might just be easier to look at what you've already done than looking to the network diagram each time. D to D, there's zero. D to E, I haven't done that one yet, but there's five. So I'd have to look here from D to E. E to A, A to E is zero. E to B is four. E to C, there was nothing. E to D, there is five and then nothing. So that is how you transform this network diagram into a weighted graph. Now I'm gonna go back to the PowerPoint now. So there is an example of what the graph looks like. Now, here we have been given a weighted table and we have been asked, we will be asked to draw a graph, draw a network diagram. But first we'll start with question A, what will the vertices be? So the vertices will just be what is in green. It will be A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Each node will be represented by a different letter. What will the values of the weighted edges be? They would be here what is in light green. So the numerical values. So from A to B, there will be a weight of 32. And that is the same for all of these weights in the table. So if, let's just pick a random one here, 42. So from E to D, there will be 42. Draw a weighted graph to represent the information in the table. This is what the weighted graph would look like. We would go across and we would go from A to B, there has to be an edge. So we would draw an edge from A to B and we would put the value of 32 in there. Then we would look and we would go from A to C. There is an edge there with a value of 15. So we would know there would be an edge coming out of the node A, going to node C, with a value of 15. And finally, we'd have a look and we'd see from A to D with a value of 20. So coming out of node A, there will be one final edge going to D with a value of 20. Because if we look along here, there is no edge from A to E, no edge from A to F, and no edge from A to G. So as you can see, there is only three edges. So A has a degree of three, and that is going to be C and D. And you would go ahead and do that for the rest of the graph, for the rest of the table. So you would see from B to A, which we have already drawn, 
there would be 32. Now there would be one from B to C. So here B to C with a value of 30. And finally, B would have one final edge of 18, which is going to F. So similar to A, B will only have a degree of three, going to A, C and F. Whereas C will be different. C will have five, a degree of five, because it has five edges coming out of it. So we can see that C goes to A with 15, C goes to B with 30, C does not go to itself, but C does go to D. So C goes to D with 10. C goes to E with 53 and C goes to G with 24. And so you would have to look ahead and see in the graph where each thing connects to. And so when you're drawing it, you may have to rub out your lines and try again. I'll show you what I mean. Let me share my whiteboard. Let me erase what I have written. Okay, I'll do it in black. So if we had drawn A here, and A going to B, and A going to D, and say we had drawn C down here, C had five things coming out of it. And so we could do C to B, C to D, but we might not be able to do C to whatever, other vertex we had because it may have crossed over and that just looks messy and it might not work and it might disrupt your network diagram and so we would have to erase this and we would have to try again and put C in a more easily accessible place than down the bottom. And so that's why C would be placed in the middle because it had five things, five edges coming out of it. And so putting it in the middle makes it easily accessible and makes a clear diagram of what you're trying to re represent from the table. And the last question, question D, what is the total of the weighted path from A to E via B, C and G? So this would be a good time to grab your calculator. And from A to E, so A to E is down there, but we have to go first via B. So we will go from A to B. A to B has a value of 32. And then we have to go to C. So B to C has a value of 30. And C to G has a value of 24 and we want to go to E. So we're at G, so now we have to go to E and from G to E has a value of 45. So when you plus all those weights together, the weight of path comes to a total of 131 from A to E via B, C and G.